And now in this segment of video, let us we discuss IUPAC notation of a galvanic cell. As for the IUPAC norms, how to notate? So what is the representation of the galvanic cell uh, in this form? Let us say. Always remember that in IUPAC form, always left side. Left side is always be anode, anodic of cell. Anodic cell we should write it in left side. And the right side, right side is always be cathodic reaction. Left side is anodic reaction, right side is cathodic reaction, and the vertical line, single vertical line. It represents electrode or the phase transition between the metal and its ionic solution. Okay, that we represent with a single vertical line. And the double vertical line, double vertical line, it represents a salt bridge. Salt bridge. Simply, already I told you, just remember, elbow A, low. When writing the IUPAC notation, left side is always we represent anodic reaction, right side always we represent cathodic reaction. Single vertical line indicates what an electrode, and a double vertical line indicates what salt bridge. For example, if you take the galvanic cell reaction, zinc solid plus CuSO4 aqueous gives rise to zinc sulfate aqueous plus copper solid. This reaction how you will represent in two forms we can write. One is what is the oxidation here? Zinc to zinc sulfate. Na? So first you write zinc zinc sulfate aqueous. So the single vertical line indicates what? Electrode. This is one electrode. Double vertical line salt bridge. Next uh, copper sulfate aqueous single vertical line copper solid. So this is a representation, IUP is a representation of the above galvanic cell. Otherwise, as we know, sulfate ion is a spectator ion. No need of representing the spectator ions. You can also represent zinc sol solid, Zn plus 2 aqueous, double vertical line, Cu plus 2 aqueous, Cu solid. In this form also we can represent. In case, if the electrodes are what gases, in case of gaseous reactions, platinum, Hydrogen HCl aqueous. So, hydrogen is at P1 atmosphere and this is at P2 atmosphere platinum. So, like this, we can represent this. This is one electrode and this is another two hydrogen electrodes. They are representing, they are at a different electrodes, different pressures. This is what electrode concentration is. Electrode. Why? Because they differ in the pressures of the electrodes. So, like this is a representation of the uh, galvanic cells and here one point you should remember while you are representing the while you are writing the IUPAC notations all solids gases all solids gases should be extreme terminals that is why here zinc solid copper solid you don't you should not write copper solid uh, single vertical and copper sulfate always the solid should be at terminals that is the one logic and always the ion should be near to the double double vertical means nearer to the salt bridge. Here ions, ions. Nearer to that. Okay. So this is a uh, IUPAC representation of galvanic cell. And after that, so here uh, when we, when a, whenever a metal is in contact with its metallic solution, aqua solution of its metallic salt, okay, the, the potential that they generated, that potential we call it as what? Electrode potential. Electrode potential. So, electrode potential is nothing but whenever a metal is in contact with its metallic solution, a metal is in contact with its metallic solution. So, this is representing what? Single vertical line. Metal is in contact with its metallic solution. Whatever the potential generated, and that potential we call it as what? That potential we call it as what? Electrode potential E. Okay, and this electrode potential generally represented with E 
and here reaction. So reaction can be a oxidation reaction or reduction reaction. For example, if it is oxidation reaction, how we will write E M M plus N. So indicate what M becoming what M plus N means oxidation. If it is a reduction reaction, how we will write E M plus N M. So here one point. So this is what oxidation potential SOP and this is what reduction potential. So that point you should remember. This is what electrode potential. Then what is the difference between electrode potential and standard electrode potential? Standard. Standard electrode potential. Standard electrode potential we represent it with E naught. Whereas electrode potential E, that's it. Okay, it's E naught. So what is the what is the standard electrode potential? The potential that was generated between the metal to its metallic solution at a standard condition. So what are the conditions we considered as the standard conditions? When the pressure is 1 atm, 1 atmosphere, and the concentration is 1, 1, and the temperature is 298 kelvins. When you take this, when you consider these conditions, then uh, at these conditions, whatever the potential they generated, that potential we call it as what? Standard electrode potential. Remember that. Here temperature they won't mention as well. They didn't mention the NCRT. They mentioned in pressure and concentration. Pressure is should be one atmosphere and the concentration is unimolar concentration. At that conditions, whatever the potential that they generated, that potential we call as standard electrode potential. As in the electrode potential, here also we represent this with E naught. E naught indicates standard electrode potential and here reaction. Okay, so oxidation if you consider E naught M M plus N. So this indicates what? SOP standard oxidation potential. So this is not standard OP and this is R. Here SOP standard oxidation potential. This is oxidation potential only and this is reduction potential only. Now this is not SOP standard why because this is a not. Not indicates what standard electrode potential. And standard oxidation potential. Suppose if it is E naught, M plus N becoming N. So what we can write? Standard reduction potential. And one point we should remember. As per the IUPAC notation, as per IUPAC, electrode potential if they mention, electrode potentials, so what they consider? Standard reduction potential, SRP values. SRP values they consider as what electrode potentials, not oxidation potential. As per the UPAC, SRP values they consider as what electrode potentials. Okay, so this is about the electrode potential, standard electrode potential. And one more thing, we cannot calculate the electrode potential of single half cell. For example, zinc to zinc sulfate. Suppose you take the electrochemical cell, galvanic cell, zinc to zinc sulfate is oxidation half cell, copper sulfate to copper is reduction half cell. Can you calculate the zinc zinc sulfate electrode potential alone? No. One thing is, we cannot calculate the electrode potential of single half cell. Okay, always we can calculate the electrode potential of two half cells. By joining two half cells, only we can calculate the cell potential. Okay, so the electrode potential value of single half cell cannot measure. Okay, suppose if you wanted to calculate the electrode potential of a single half cell, how they can how we can calculate? Simply you connect with some other known potential electrodes. That is what we call as what reference electrode. For example, zinc sulfate. You wanted to calculate SRP value of zinc zinc sulfate, you wanted to calculate. Just connect this with the hydrogen electrode. Why? Because hydrogen electrode is one of the reference electrode. And a scalar electrode you can use. So, so the electrode potential of a single cell can measure by using some reference electrodes. Here, to calculate these electrode potentials, we are using some reference electrodes. What are the reference electrodes we are using? Reference electrodes means the electrodes whose potential is known to us. 
and that we are using to measure the electrode potential of unknown. Okay, those electrodes we call as electrode uh, reference electrode. Generally, we use two reference electrodes. One is hydrogen electrode, that is what we call it as SHE. SHE stands for what? Standard hydrogen electrode. Also, we call it as normal hydrogen electrode. So, she are NHE, both are same. Standard hydrogen electrode. Then, what is this standard hydrogen electrode? We will discuss that later. Next, one more thing is what? Saturated caramel electrode. Saturated, you don't think that is a standard caramel electrode. Saturated caramel electrode. In general, caramel electrodes are of three types. Okay, so here you write one thing. Caramel electrode, you write CE. And these are of three types. Saturated caramel electrode, normal caramel electrode, desi normal caramel electrode. Three types of caramel electrodes are there, but in general we use saturated caramel electrode. What is the difference between them? We will discuss, no doubt. Okay, first of all, standard hydrogen electrode, if you take, what is this? Generally you take, okay, H plus solution. H plus means HCl solution. When the concentration of HCl is 1 molar, okay, and the pressure of hydrogen is 1 bar, pressure of hydrogen is 1 bar. So, when uh, and we are using some inert electrodes, what are the inert electrodes we use? Either platinum or palladium, why? Because they will not react. That is why uh, they just, you just take the 1 molar HCl solution. Into that HCl solution, you pass hydrogenic gas with a pressure of 1 atmosphere, 1 bar, and to uh, to, uh, to increase the surface area, we are providing some inner electrodes. So, by using this platinum or palladium, what happens? We are increasing the surface area so that the contaction between the gas and the solution will be more. Okay, so that is what. So, when you provide that, okay, what is the voltage? So, the voltage of seen saturated, I mean, uh, standard hydrogen electrode is 0 volts. So, what is that? 0 volts. So, on this standard hydrogen electrode, always we use it as anode to calculate the SRP of unknown. For example, zinc to zinc sulfate, you wanted to call SRP of zinc to zinc sulfate. You take zinc to zinc sulfate as cathode, hydrogen electrode as anode, calculate that. Why? Because SRP of hydrogen electrode is zero. So, to measure the SRP of unknown electrode, standard hydrogen electrode is used as anode. Suppose, if you wanted to calculate the SOP of unknown electrode, in that case, we use hydrogen electrode as cathode and uh, the unknown electrode as anode. So, it depends upon the electrode potential values. Next, come to the caramel electrode if you take. Caramel electrode is nothing but, so there was a mercury and the mercury is covered with mercury chloride. This is what we call it as mercurous chloride. That mercury is Hg2Cl2 and that Hg2Cl2 we call it as caramel normally. That is why we call this electrode as caramel and that Hg2Cl2 is covered with KOH solution. So, KCL solution. Okay, so first of all, mercury. When mercury is covered with this is what? This is Hg2Cl2 and this is KCL solution. Okay, so mercury, mercury chloride, this is what we call it as caramel. Caramel and that contact with KCL solution. This is actually under raw platinum white and it will act as a caramel electrode. Now, the point you should remember, I told you already, three types are there, saturated, normal, decimal. What is the difference between them? These are, we are classifying based upon the concentration of KCL solution. Suppose, if, if in case of saturated caramel electrode, what is the norm, what is the normality of KCL solution? Molarity, normality, if you take 3.5 normal KCL solution, they use. Okay, saturated solution of KCL they use. In that saturation level, what is the normality? 3.5 normal. Okay, and in this saturated caramel electrode, what is the voltage? So, it is not 0 volts. It is equal to 0 0.242. 0 0.242 volts. 0 0.242 volts. Whereas the second one is what? Normal caramel electrode. Don't think that normal is not general. Normal means normality, one normality. So when one normal KCL solution was used, then that, no, then, then that caramel electrode we call it as normal caramel electrode. 
and whose voltage is little bit uh, higher than that that is 0 0.268 0 0.268 volts in case of DC normal calculator DC is what 0 0.1 normal KCL solution if you use 0 0.1 normal KCL solution and its value was 0 0.338 volts 0 0.338 volts so like this uh, we can calculate by increase by decreasing normality what happens the voltage increases in general which calculator electrode we use saturated calculator electrode we use so its voltage is 0 0.242 okay this is how the reference like i think uh, you know what is electrode potential what is standard electrode potential what are the reference electrodes we use okay let us we move to the next concept is what emf So what is EMF and how to calculate the EMF of a cell? Or galvanic cell intake. EMF stands for it is nothing but electromotive force. Electromotive force. Yes, how to calculate it? EMF is nothing but it is the difference between the difference between electrode potentials of potentials of two half cells is called what emf simple logic the difference between electrode potential of uh, what uh, oxidation half cell and reduction for uh, half cell then, then the difference we call it as what uh, electromotive force of the cell so what is emf stands for is nothing but the total voltage then that cell can generate simple logic EMF of the cell means maximum how much voltage that cell can generate. That is what we call as EMF of the cell. Yes, how to calculate the voltage generated by the cell? There was a formula, there was three formulas are there. You know that left half cell is what? Oxidation half cell. Right side half cell is what? Production half cell. So, if they given oxidation half cell SOP, standard oxidation potential of left side half cell, standard reduction potential of right side half cell if they given and to cathode different different oxidation reduction of potentials they given then simple as it emf emf is equal to sop of anode why because at anode which process takes place oxidation process that is the sop of anode plus srp of cathode at cathode which process takes place reduction so the SRP value of cathode, the sum of both we call it as EMF, simple logic. And remember that one process, uh, one, one logic is if you know the SOP value, then SRP value is the same magnitude but with opposite side. So that is a simple logic, that is SOP is equal to minus SRP or SRP is equal to minus SOP. Now based upon that, I am modifying the above formula, how I am writing, writing, in the place of SOP of anode, what we can write minus SO, SRP of anode you can write now. This is the minus term, this is the positive term. I am modifying this as what? SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode. So, if both half cells SRP values they given, what is the formula now? SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode. And the third one, if if SOP values they given, now SOP of anode already we use. Now, in the base of SRP of cathode, what you can write? Minus SRP, SOP of cathode. So, simple one more thing is what? SOP of anode minus SOP of cathode. So, by using these three formulas, we can easily calculate the EMF of the cell. One formula is SOP of anode plus SRP of cathode. Next one is SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode. Or SOP of anode minus SOP of cathode. Simple. Three formulas by using this you can calculate and after by you after you calculate the EMF of the cell whether the cell is spontaneous or non-spontaneous how can you determine simple logic if after you calculate the EMF of the cell if EMF of the cell E cell is zero it is considered if it is a zero that means the cell the cell is at at equilibria the cell is at equilibria. Suppose if, if cell is at equilibria means there was no uh, 
uh, what you can uh, it will not generate the electricity it will not consume the electricity that's it this is at equilibrium suppose if e cell is po positive positive then it will act as what electrochemical cell then that is a spontaneous process it will take space okay e cell is a positive then only spontaneous and this is what reversible next one if e cell is negative if e cell is negative then that process is what it act as electrolytic cell why because if e cell is negative that is non spontaneous non spontaneous is by electrolytic cell. clear this is the irreversible so based upon the e values we can decide after you calculate the emf of the cell if emf of the cell is a zero that is at equilibrium of positive spontaneous negative non -spontaneous. Negative means it is acting as electrolytic cell, it is an irreversible. Whereas positive means spontaneous and reversible. That's it. Okay. Next, you may get that out. Sometimes what happens, two electrodes they give you and they give you SRB values of both. So if SRB values they give them, which electrode you should consider as anode, which will consider as a cathode? Generally, the people will feel a difficulty here to differentiate that. One point you remember. Whenever the two electrodes when they give them, the electrode, suppose if SRB value is given, then let us consider, if SRB value is given, the electrode whose SRB value is more negative, or least, okay, more negative, or is maximum, whose SRB value is higher, it always be act as a cathode. Just compare the two electrodes, the electrode whose SRB value is higher, that will act as what? Cathode. Why? Because SRB value is more means it is always tendency to reduce reduction at what, what at what electrode the reduction takes place cathode that is why so one point you remember the electrode the electrode whose srp value is a high whose srp value is higher higher means less negative more positive understood so whose srp value is higher act as what it acts as cathode Okay, and the electrode, the electrode whose SRP value is lower, it will act as anode. Act as anode. So simply by by using this, you can easily calculate what uh, you can uh, identify which is anode and which is cathode. Once you calculate the EMF of the cell, you can easily calculate. So this is about the uh, <coughs> electrode potential. And how to calculate the EMF of the cell. Next, let us we move to the next one. And generally, what are the factors on which the EMF of the cell depends? If you see that factors, the first factor is the EMF of the cell. Factors on which the EMF of cell depends. The first one is nature of substance. Nature of substance. The second one is nature of solvent nature of solvent third one is temperature the fourth one is concentration of ions concentration of ions these are the main four factors on which the emf of the cell depends and the effect of concentration of the ion is how the emf of the cell depends on the concentration of the ions to explain that nernst equation here clear so let us in the next uh, let us we move to the uh, Nernst equation. So before we move to the Nernst equation, let us we finish the concept of electrochemical series here itself. Electrochemical series. Yes, what is electrochemical series? Electrochemical series is nothing but the arrangement of the metals in the increasing order of SRPs. In the increasing order of SRP or decreasing order of SOPs is called what electrochemical series. The arrangement, the arrangement of metals in increasing order, increasing order of SRPs or decreasing order of SOPs called 
electrochemical series. So if you look at the electrochemical series, it will start with the lithium. Okay, lithium plus ions two. Lithium SRB value that is by reduction, gaining of electrons. Lithium. Next, all one A group elements, two A group elements will come first. One. So after lithium, cesium plus two cesium. Next, uh, uh, rubidium plus two rubidium. Next, potassium two potassium. After two A group elements, uh, barium plus two two barium. Strontium plus two two strontium. Ca plus two. To Ca and then sodium plus two to sodium. So all one A group elements of two two A group elements metal ions are placed at the top of this ratio at the top of the series. So set this after one A potassium so uh, calcium sodium magnesium. Okay then aluminium, zinc, iron, nickel, tin, lead. Okay. After that, hydrogen, copper, mercury, silver, gold. So like this, these all are having <coughs> what uh, negative values. No? Suppose if you take this one, it will be around minus three point six, minus three point four, minus two point eight, minus two, minus one point five, one point eight, zero, plus one, plus one point five, plus two, plus three. Like this, what happened by going down? What happened? The SRP values increasing. Okay. So one point you should remember. But from top to bottom, from top to bottom, what happened? The SRP values, SRP value increasing. From top to bottom, SRP value increasing. Next, from top to bottom, what happened? The reactivity. So SRP values increasing means reactivity decreases. Reactivity decreases. So these are the two points you remember. And what is the conclusion from the above electrochemical series? Conclusion is what is the use of this electrochemical series? So by using it, just go through the NCRT. So in the NCRT they have given a table so that you can understand. In that electrochemical series, all the metal ions which are present above in the hydrogen all will act as what? Uh, all are what highly active reactive metals, and those are present below in the series, below of hydrogen in the series, all are what less reactive metals. Okay, so this is the once you go through the NCRT, you can you get a clear idea. What is the conclusion from the electrochemical series? This is the very very important conclusion. Conclusion first one. In the electrochemical series, the metal ion which is placed lower, lower means at the bottom. Okay, the play the metal ion which is placed at bottom having highest SRP value. Always the metal ion which is having highest SRP value always will act as Cathode. So, the metal which is placed bottom will act as cathode, and the metal which is placed at the top will act as anode. That's the first conclusion. Just compare the two metals in the electrochemical series, which is at the bottom will act as a cathode, which is at the top will act as anode. That's the first conclusion. The next one. If the metal placed at the bottom acts as a cathode, the cathode which causes the express reduction. So the metal which is placed at bottom, which is placed at bottom, undergoes which process reduction takes place. And the metal which is placed at top, placed at the top, undergoes oxidation. That is the second point you should remember. And the third one. When you compare the two metals, the metal which is the present the place at the top will be more reactive, will be placed at the bottom will be less reactive. So top metal, the top metals are more reactive, and the bottom metals, the bottom metals are less reactive. If they are asking the reactivity of the two metals, which is more reactive, always the metal which is present at the top. And uh, because of the more reactivity, a top metal can displace bottom metal. Okay, the metal which is present at the top, top metals can replace, uh, can dis displace bottom metals, but bottom metals cannot replace the top metals. That is one more point. And one more thing. 
bottom metals matter place at the bottom undergoes cathode na cathode means reduction na the species which is undergoing reduction what we call oxidizing agents so <coughs> the metals which is placed at the bottom will act as what strong strong oxidizing agents strong oxidizing agents that means oxidizing agent power the oxidizing agent power is directly proportional to srp okay oxidizing power is directly proportional to srp and the metal which is placed at the top will undergo oxidation okay the undergoing oxidation means what we call reducing agent so they act as what strong reducing agents strong reducing agents that means what we can write reducing agent power is directly proportional to sop sop are inversely proportional to srp so just remember these five conclusions so that we can easily this uh, identify which metal is acting as undergoing cap oxidation which is undergoing reduction which is acting as a strong oxidizing agent which is acting as a strong reducing agent everything you can identify okay once again the metal placed at the bottom act, uh, act as a cathode top act as anode bottom metal undergo reduction top metal undergo oxidation top metal is always more reactive than bottom metal so the top metal can displace the bottom metal and the <coughs> bottom metal undergoing reduction so they act as what strong oxidizing agents so oxidizing power is directly proportional to srp value and uh, uh, top metal is undergoing oxidation and they under uh, they uh, oxidation so the species which is undergoing oxidation we call it as reducing agent so reducing agent power is directly proportional to sop and inverse proportional to srp okay so this is about the conclusion now let us move to the non stick